Hello and welcome to episode 33 of the Spotlight Games podcast. Today we're going to be talking about Starfield and Redfall being delayed. A bunch of the games coming to PlayStation Plus. The Dead Space remake has a release date and Silent Hill's rumored return. I'm your host, Patrick, and I'm joined, as always, by my sweet co-host himbo, Cayman Darty. Cayman, how are you? What exactly is a himbo? See, I was really hoping you wouldn't ask me that, actually. Uh... I've just been seeing it online. Maybe it's a terrible thing. It might be. I mean, I, I think, probably am. Here's my guess. It is I believe, I believe, and I'm going to pull this up. This is a kind of like a, a little spotlight or a little safe track cinema moment right here. <laughs> yeah. I believe. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So I believe it's like a male version of a bimbo. Okay. That so checks according, out. according to Google, the actual definition is unattractive, but unintelligent man. <laughs> uh, well, the unattractive part, or the attractive part's not true. The unintelligible and unintelligent part that is true. I'm so, both ugly and dumb as fuck. You're so, a you're a uh, like a reverse himbo in in your eyes. I don't know if, if a reverse himbo implies that I'm smart. I, I think a reverse himbo would imply you're smart, uh, but unattractive. I think because if if a himbo is unattractive, no, a himbo is uh, is attractive but stupid. A reverse himbo would be smart. Yeah, but I'm both dumb and unattractive but i see that's where we disagree oh honestly honestly i now that i know the definition of himbo you're not a himbo thanks i think you're you're very attractive and you're very smart oh so i'm just a bimbo now (laughs) well i think a bimbo is suggests that they're unintelligent but attractive okay yeah no it's there's semantics happening here maybe maybe a lot of that was was highly offensive tomato to go fuck yourself there you go we'll find out one way or another uh but hey we have a lot of video games to talk about because this is the spotlight games podcast where each and every week we're going to talk about the latest and the greatest in the world of video games you can get it Cayman, by subscribing to our youtube channel you can get it by subscribing in your favorite podcast app and hey while you're there why don't you review us why don't you rate us you can be on the show mail at spotlightgames.net shoot us an email send us a little electronic mail you can dm us on twitter at Spot Games Pod, Instagram at Spotlight Games Podcast, TikTok at Spotlight Games Pod. Really got to combine those into one name across all three. But who am I but a silly, silly boy? Uh, Cayman, this week in Trash Cinema, tell us about that unhinged episode that was released this week. Holy shit, guys. We... No, me, Cayman, lost his goddamn mind while attempting to corral Patrick and Jeremiah Hobbs, our guest hosts on this episode, while we reviewed the 1991 cult classic, uh, Dollman. It's, and um, whew, it was something. It was an episode to listen to because uh, I think it, if I remember one line correctly, It was me saying, boys, I'm really pissed off right now. Do you really want to step in this hornet's nest? (laughs) Uh, So if you want to know what that means, you should should tune in and listen to us figure out what the fuck is going on with fat boys and 13 inch men and Jack Earl Haley, non-exclusive. Yeah, Um, it's um, nuts. It was a crazy episode. It was a lot. So yeah, check it out. Um, I unequivocally recommend you don't watch the movie just listen to the episode but Cayman will disagree he's gonna say go watch that movie but um, go watch that movie yeah it's on it's uh, on two it's on Tubi. so if you got it's time on Tubi. our it's our, like show, our show sponsor on un, uh, unofficial show sponsor Tubi. um Tubi. well we got a lot of stuff to talk about today we have a fun yeah. show planned let's start as we always do Cayman, with what we've been playing Cayman, what have you been playing this last week sir well I saw you for the first time since I want to say Halloween. I think um, so. it's been a long time. This yeah, virtual long time. podcast recording has really like it's both let us grow together and it's also hmm. completely killed our friendship in that we see each other virtually every week. So it's like we yeah. don't really ever plan to hang out. So yeah, I haven't seen you in like in six most months. weeks we see each other multiple times a week yeah. just virtually. Yeah. Um and so we actually got to see each other very briefly, but we got to see each other in person for the first time in a long time. There was some kissing. I mean, some, some. some light, some light cuddling. 
Um, and you gave me your copy of Kirby. Hey. So I have been playing Kirby on the Switch. What and do you think? I really like it. It's a lot of fun. It is very easy. Yeah. Uh, the game is very... I'm playing on like what they call wild mode, which is <laughs> the hardest difficulty. And I'm like... I, and I'm not saying this is like, oh, well, I just platinum to Elden Ring. Kirby's easy. No, like this game is... There is no challenge. The only challenge in this game is like, you're just going to miss a bunch of collectibles and random shit um, when trying to play the game. The game is kind of designed that way, you know, yeah. to to go through and replay levels because you're going to miss like little secret areas and stuff that they want you to find. That's the only like difficult thing is like trying to figure some of that stuff out. Um, but the actual difficulty of the game is very low. Uh, but I will say, and it's something that you didn't do, is I've been playing in co-op mode. With oh, my cool. Fiance. Yeah, tell us about it. Um. You know, co-op mode makes the game much easier somehow, uh, which is kind of insane for a game that's already easy. But co-op mode, yeah, how does that game, game get easier? Just gets easier in co-op mode. So you play as Bandana, uh, Bandana Waddle D, who has a, a, a set of move sets that he has a spear. Um, so he just jabs a lot, and then he you can throw your spears, or you can launch yourself up in the air and kind of just like throw your spears down for a while while you hover. Um, so you can't like pick up any powers or anything like that. Um, and it's fun. I don't think ultimately that it's the co-op mode is great. Uh, I could, I could see myself playing the entire game in co-op mode with Sid and just burning through the whole thing. Um, but I don't I don't know the, the co-op mode for me because you can't use any powers and it's not any more difficult in co-op mode. It doesn't strike me as like something that's worth really trying to do anything else with. I mean, still cool. I think the game itself is great just in single player mode. Sure. Co-op mode is fun with someone else. I could see co-op mode being a version you would do with like a kid. Like you if you have a child or you have a younger person like a little a little child with you for some reason. Ooh, ooh. You know? Oh, I know. And you and you and you wanted and you want to play the game like that, then I could see that being something worth doing, but ultimately, I think single player is probably the better option for a majority of people playing the game, but yeah. It's fun. It's nice. it's a good game. I've been I've been having fun. What have you uh what have you been playing? I so I um I've kind of been talking about this a little bit for a few weeks where I'm just like I've been trying to figure out what I want to play. Like I Sure. Star Wars uh, Skywalker Saga was just filling a void. And I, I don't think I mentioned this last week. I, I 100% of it. Uh, so I, I um, put that, you know, away. Mm. And I was I jumped around like I've, I've been dabbling with Trek to Yomi. I'm I say dabbling. I mean, I'm mostly I'm almost done beating it. But uh, it's a short game. It's a very short game. But I was like, I want something big. I want something bombastic. I want something undeniably triple A. Mm -hmm. And so I gave I gave Cyberpunk 2077 another shot, and I it, I'm finally in. I still think there are a lot of problems with the game, sure. uh, but I've gotten to the point where like I just like want to do one more side mission. I want to do one more story mission, or like it's I for the first time in a long time, like in front of a TV, not just on my Switch. I played a game for like more than an hour. Uh, which was a lot of fun. Um, that game is wild in certain ways. Like the, the world design of that game is kind of insane. Like, like the, the world of night city is awesome. I was going down. I'm like in, I don't know. I don't know like the landmarks yet or like the parts of the city well enough yet, but I'm just like in like a random part of the city, like doing some side missions. I'm like looking for these taxi cabs that have gone rogue. Uh, these self-driving oh, taxi yeah. cabs. Super fun mission. Cool mission. And uh, I am going down what seems like a very normal street. And I'm like kind of on the, on the edge of the sidewalk, like by where doors would be. And I happen to see like an open uh, prompt come up from like what I wouldn't have thought was a door I could open. Mm -hmm. I open it and I go in and it's like this hidden fucking like red light district section, almost like amsterdam-esque where like inside there's these like bays where like inside each of these like bay areas are these like cyborg men and women dancing and like it's just like this random ass club just like in the middle of a street behind a random door 
that just seemed like a random door that would have led to like an apartment. And it's more than just a club. It's like it goes into this alleyway and there's like all the it, it essentially what looks like on the map to be just like a building is actually like this like miniature little like section. There's just like a whole bunch of shit in there. And like that has been my experience so far with cyberpunk that I've really, really enjoyed is this like just stumbling into these random areas that are I can tell were spent like hours were spent just making this very particular and like unique and cool i haven't seen very much like reused stuff i guess is what i'm trying to say too sure uh, i've only been playing for like eight or nine hours so like i'm sure there is but i've just i've been really impressed with the world mm-hmm. of night city i don't care all that much for the gameplay like i the the gunplay and like the the combat itself i'm not a huge fan of but i'm really enjoying like the semi like rpg aspect of it um so I expect that I'll probably finish it unless I get bored with it. But so far, like I, I have been having a good time with it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah it, took, you, it took a minute, but now have you, have you picked up the dildo nightstick yet? No, I mm-hmm. have only seen one dildo in nine hours. Oh. Cause I remember yeah. when the game first launched one of the big, uh, like, points of feedback that so many people had were like you'll open a trash can and it's just covered with dildos there's just dildo you can pick up seven dildos out of the trash can or you kill somebody and they just have a dildo in like on them that you can pick up i only have seen one dildo so far it was in in an apartment of someone uh so i've been actually surprised at the lack of of dildo action this game has given me that is a shame. Yeah, that's a real shame. There, were, I had so many dildos, especially the dildo, the dildo <laughs> nightstick was such a funny moment. You you get it through like a weird side quest where you have to have sex with a, a character you you encounter at the beginning of the game. Um, yeah, I want to when you that. yeah when you do that, you end up getting this dildo nightstick and just running and it deals ridiculous damage and you just run around slapping people with this big old floppy dick. So, and it's fantastic. Maybe there's more than one quest where you just have sex with somebody because oh, yeah. I'm I'm playing this game and I'm like going through. I'm like, I don't want to jump back into a main mission. So I just want to see like what side quests I have. And it does a cool thing where it'll tell you like when you're looking at the side quest, how dangerous it is based on the level you are. So this at the of the side quest I had, this is the only one that wasn't a very high risk, supposedly. So I go to this place. I don't remember like what it. I was supposed to do other than like, I just had to go talk to this person and I go talk to this person and there's like two lines of dialogue. And then all of a sudden it just cuts to us fucking. And then we're done. The mission's over and nothing else happens. <laughs> I was like, was this a side mission just to have like, make me go have sex with this person? Well, do you remember who the person was? If I heard their name, I would remember it was a woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am a woman in this game. Was she, was she a, the cop at the very beginning of the game? uh like regina something regina no, jones no 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 no, no, no i don't remember never i never had i never got to have sex with regina that's a bummer and i don't think it was regina now that like mm. i was just thinking maybe that was her uh yeah i don't remember who this person was if i go through my like completed quests i could probably figure it out but i was just very surprised i was like wait is it the, really this game this quest was just for me to have sex with this person and that's it maybe yeah, I just, a- maybe i wasn't paying attention maybe there was something in the dialogue that i missed but yeah, there's 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 a few times where you'll have interactions that just uh, just randomly lead to having sex with a character. Yeah, very strange. What a strange game. It is a strange game. It's a very fun game. Yeah. Uh, I'm disappointed that you don't like the gameplay as much. Um, I mean, I, it's not revolutionary, but sure. I, I found myself enjoying, especially later in the game when you start to like unlock skill trees and like you can you can really fine tune how you want to play. I um, think it that's really the issue doors. that I've been having is that. I there's so much that you can unlock in this game from mm-hmm. a from a like skill tree perspective that I kind of like don't know what to do and like I feel like I might be spreading it out too much mm. and like I think I need to maybe redo my thing and just like put most of my points into like one because each of the like little sections there's like two or three types of perks you can get like with combat there's like ninjutsu which is like stealth and another word I forget which is like if you're going to kill people 
it's like a lot of them have that that like it's either binary or like it has three options uh and so maybe that's my issue is that i just haven't unlocked enough yet because right now it just everything feels really samey like nothing Mm -hmm. the combat always feels the exact same to me i don't feel like i have enough understanding or skill to be doing any sort of hacking like sure there's, it gives me a lot of hacking options but like i don't see how this would help me like the options that i mm-hmm. have so maybe i just haven't unlocked the good options yet yeah i mean this I is like I, I would say there's a similar issue with elden ring mm-hmm. where okay. it wasn't until about 55 to 60 hours in that i felt like i was actually starting to focus on like a narrowed down build interesting like everything that i was doing was very similar like i was like i don't think i mean unless my build was just mage like you basically it's mage or uh you're a physical attack build yeah and then 55 60 hours in i'm like okay now i can actually start to figure out what i want my build to be and i feel like cyberpunk has that same kind of situation I think you get it's faster in because you like cyberpunk story is about 35 to 40 hours. Okay. Um, if you, if you're like mainlining to try to be like, I want to do as much as I can, but also I'm really focused on the story and like sure. just getting through some of those. Cause there's multiple branching paths. Why not? So I do yeah. feel like it, it kind of has similar, similar beats. I will say, say, and this will be the last thing I say, so we can get to the news, but I love Johnny Silverhand. Really? Yeah, I was just kind of like meh on him. Like, well, here's here's what I'll say. I love the concept of Johnny Silverhand. Mm, this like, fair. I have this uh, uh, chip in me that on this chip is like the ghost of this like person. So now sure. it's like I see this person when I go around and do stuff. I love the concept. I don't necessarily yeah. love Keanu's performance as Johnny Silverhand. Yeah, it's a bit stilted. It's a bit stale. Uh, but, but yeah, so I, I'm interested to see where that goes. Like, I, I like that it's very much seems to be, um, a key part of the story. So we'll see. It I'll does. report back. I, um, I do want to dabble in some other stuff so that I don't just talk about cyberpunk for the next five straight episodes, but, uh, I'll keep you posted. I'll tell you what I won't be playing anytime soon. Cayman. What's up? Starfield. So fucking or, Starfield. Uh, or, uh, Redfall. Yep, not coming, boys. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, this happened. I think it was after we recorded, but before we posted the episode. So we didn't talk about it last week. So this might not be news to you, but we're going to talk about it because there's a lot to unpack here. Pulling from Tom Phillips at Eurogamer, Bethesda's highly anticipated Starfield has been delayed from this year and will now launch in the first half of 2023. The company has also announced a similar delay again to the first half of 2023 for Redfall. We've made the decision to delay the launches of Redfall and Starfield to the first half of 2023, Bethesda announced via Twitter today. The teams at Arcane Austin, which is making Redfield, and Bethesda Game Studios, which is making Starfield, have incredible ambitions for their games, and we want to ensure that you receive the best, most polished versions of them. We want to thank everyone for their excitement for Redfall and Starfield. That energy is a huge part of what inspires us all every day and drives our own excitement for what we're creating. We... (laughs) They, he, they wrote, we can wait. We can't wait to share our first deep dive into the gameplay for both Redfall and Starfield soon. Thank you for your support. End quote. Cayman, the question I ask you, what the fuck is happening this year for Xbox? Uh, my answer to that would be absolutely nothing is happening <laughs> for Xbox this year. This is Ooh. a massive delay. Um, I, I would even go on to say that this delay, it, it's potentially one of the biggest delays that we've ever seen from a first party studio. Um, it's insane. Like, I think the I reason is because they announced it like they gave us a date so long ago yeah. that it felt like the date couldn't move, even though like even we joked like three weeks ago, like we'll see if Starfield actually comes out this fall. But for it to actually be delayed, I think is a little shocking. Yeah, I think the big thing with with um, Starfield being delayed, I mean, obviously COVID and, and stuff like that, but I'm not sure if Bethesda, if they were still by themselves, if Bethesda would have delayed it. Mm. And I think having the backing from Microsoft and the money to be able to be like, hey, we can sit on this for a little bit longer. We can make sure that it comes out fully cooked instead of us having another Fallout 76 moment. Like, 
I think that having the Microsoft backing allows them that ability to do so. There's a potential chance that if it wasn't, they would have released it on that date and it would have been dog shit. Sure. We That's all know point. that Bethesda releases games that aren't good. Well, not not good. They releases game they release polished. games that are buggy as shit yeah. and not polished, like you said. Yeah. So I do think this is ultimately this is a good for the games themselves. This is a very bad look on Microsoft, who, if I'm not mistaken, will not release a first party game this year. And that's um, insane to me. Yeah, oh, well, there's okay, got to be something but like of uh, uh, like tentpole games. I, I, yeah, yeah like, a, like like a, something that would drive people to get an Xbox. Now, sure, you've got Game Pass and they're picking up a bunch of shit so people can get in and they can play it. Yada, yada, yada. Who, get, who cares at this point? What I'm curious about, and this is what I think a lot of people are curious about, like, why would you want to jump on the Xbox bandwagon if you're not getting any games? This has yeah. been a trend for Microsoft the last five plus years. Like, where are your first party games? What the fuck are you guys doing? Yeah, and it's it's by, odd. I, I, and we we talked off air about this before, where you're like, well, Bethesda doesn't release first party games, but like once a year, and that's fair. However, how many studios does Microsoft now own? Where the fuck are the rest of the games? Sure. What are you guys doing? I was worried that when they purchased Bethesda, and even more so now with the Activision thing kind of being very much a limbo. It's like, look, Microsoft does not have a very good track record on managing their studios. They just don't. This is not me being a fanboy. This is not me being like, oh, one team's better than the other and I'm a Sony pony or I'm a Nintendo guy. Like, that's not the case. Nintendo, I think, is what we call uh, uh, Nintendo, Nintendo, yes. That's actually what they call them. Uh, sources cited, yes. Um, you know, the thing is we talk about is that Microsoft doesn't release games very often, first party games, and they don't manage their studios very well. One of their biggest games over the last like several years was was supposed to be Crackdown 3. That was like the tent pole release of the year, and it was horrible. Then we look at like the new Halo game. Yeah, they bungled that. Does is anyone talking about that anymore? Yeah, I mean that a lot of people have been saying like that's a game even though they pushed it a year to last fall to November of 2021 that they should have pushed it another year because it didn't have forge. It didn't have co-op multiplayer. Like it, it had online multiplayer, but it didn't have, you couldn't, you still can't play the story co-op, which is like a, a really big, a big draw for halo. Yeah. Like it's growing up. Like that was the, like my brothers and I, we would always play halo co-op and that's just, we, you still can't do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, Looking at, so I was quickly going around Googling and the only Xbox first party games that I can come up with that are coming the rest of this year are Warhammer 40k something, some summer, summer tide or something like that. I, I exited the article. I should have kept it up, but I forgot. Or I exited it for some reason. And then a game called Scorn, which I'm not familiar with. It doesn't ring a bell. So um, Scorn, Scorn looks cool. Okay. Um, however, with Scorn, one, I'm not sure if it'll release this year. Yeah, there's not like um, a specific dude, date, I don't think, but it could be this year. If Scorn looks like it's a double A game, mm, okay. It it I have a feeling that Scorn will land kind of the same way that like Tokyo Ghost or Ghostwire Tokyo. Interesting, went. a Bethesda game. Where, yeah, another Beth. How okay? The last two games that Bethesda's released have both been PlayStation exclusives, and yeah. both of them were while Microsoft owned them. That's beside the point. Still just goes back and harkens back to the thing where it's like, you've got a fuck ton of money. And I'm not saying that like a fuck ton of money is going to help you get games out faster or make the games better. But I think that the reliance on the money aspect is actually a deterrent for a lot of these companies. Because why would you really put too much emphasis on doing anything or taking any chances or risk or just doing anything. I don't know yeah. what else to say. Like, what are you doing? Nothing. You're doing nothing. Well, Phil Spencer oh. has been hearing the feedback. 
he uh, a couple of days after the announcement of the delays happened, he tweeted out a statement about the delay that says, quote, these decisions are hard on teams making the games and our fans. While I fully support giving the teams time to release these great games when they're ready, we hear the feedback delivering quality and consistency is expected. We will continue to work better to meet those expectations. So it's interesting that like he's acknowledging it that like, Hey, we, we need to do better. Um, but I'm, I, I, I'm interested to see like, okay, Redfall and Starfield have been delayed to quote the first half of 2023. So are we going to get like, are these going to be summer releases? Are we going to get them like in the early spring? Like, I mean, it could be as late as June 31st or June 30th, whatever, however many days are in June, uh, that, cause that's still the first half. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I don't know. It's you ready for me to blow your mind, blow my mind, baby. Xbox Game Studios has 23 development teams in its umbrella. Okay. How many games is Xbox releasing that are first party by their studios this year? Zero. Zero. Is the Warhammer one, that's not a first party? Mm -mm. Okay, that's just an exclusive. Mm -hmm. Same with Scorn. Wow. So you got 23 teams, and I get it. Look, I get it. COVID has fucked everyone's lives up. They fucked a lot of stuff up, especially in the games industry. There's been a ton of delays. You have 23 teams, though, that are working on games actively at this moment in time. You can't release one game from 23? Sure. Yeah, it's... I, I think... I feel it's like... A, the the interesting, and I think a very important part of this story will be a year from now. A year and a half from now, two years from now. Sure. How many of those games have come out? Is it like we've gone from there are 23 studios with zero releases to 23 studios with like 12 releases, or is it only going to be like one or two? That's the thing. Like if it's still, if we're having this conversation still in a year, then it's like, okay, this is really not good. Like what are like, what's cause I mean, we'll get a call of duty this year, or actually we said, we already know we were not actually, we're going to get it next year. I think, uh, because they said yeah, that they're, they're going to take the year off. off. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like they, there are huge high profile studios that like, they're going to have to release something like that. You know what I mean? But, but yeah, it's, this is the first not, time th that it's been like, yeah, I, ugh, I'm, you're uh, not, you're not wrong. Right. Like there's a chance in a year, two years, three years time where these teams will be up and running and they will be dropping games left and right. And Microsoft will be some massive, it'll be a bit essentially a monopoly on the industry. What worries me. Come back to a little Cinderella story. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Cinderella story with uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, fuck Microsoft. My thing is, is that as of right now, your only reliance to bring people into the ecosystem with Xbox is game pass. Correct. And I get it that you're making money off of that, but your loyal fans, your diehard fans that want to play games, you're buying studios up left and right, one after another. You're literally eating full chunks of the game industry to bring them under yourself, and this is all you can produce right now is, is nothing. And that worries me that in the future, like what happens in two to three years if we get a bunch of stinkers are they going to start just giving up studios and being like, ah, you know what, never mind? Or are they going to be like EA and just start dissolving everything and being like, you don't exist, you don't exist, you don't exist anymore. Goodbye. Sure. You're going to be now part of this one team working on this one game, and we've got 5,000 people working on the next Halo game, which is fine, I guess, but it also sucks for everyone. Mm -hmm. If your management style is so poor that you can't pull anything off, and you just keep buying shit up to try to hope that that's what's going to stave off your failure. Like it's bad for the people who are paying to keep, to keep the lights on. Right. Sure. I don't like it. I I'm worried that my, my worries are starting to come true with a lot of this issues. And at this point, I, I hope on one hand that the Activision deal goes through. So Bobby Kotick can go get fucked. <laughs> and, and we can have some some studios that aren't full of toxic bullshit and sexual harassment and just horrid 
stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I'm also like, I kind of hope it doesn't go through because God knows, are you going to be releasing anything? Or is it going to be 10 years before we see another game come out of one of these studios? Sure. I mean, I definitely, I'm not as like DEFCON as you are about it, but I would be lying if I said I'm not worried that this is... It's starting to become a trend. But now, th then the question becomes, is the trend management? Is this just still fallout from COVID? Is it a mixture of both? I mean, we're I think, seeing I think other we'll, teams. We'll, well, sure, we are seeing other teams, but I mean, there Sony has a bunch of studios that we have not heard from in a very long time still. like It's not like it's... It's not like they're out here releasing games every month, but the... The proof is more so showing that Xbox is not being a very good steward for their developers so far. So we'll yes. see. We'll see what that outcome is. I hope that this is just the tail end of COVID fallout and that things will start getting back on track soon. But might not be the case. Might be that Xbox is fucking shit up. We'll see. Very well could see. We do have some good news came in. We do. Uh, Thank God. Actually, honestly, most of the rest of the show is, is good news. Uh, I love that. We started with a downer so that we can just... It's only up from here, baby. Baby. Um, Sony revealed uh, a bunch of the games coming to PS Plus this summer. Um, came in. Why don't you tell us a little bit from... I have no idea how to say his last name. Darren Bonthus, maybe? At Let's go with Bonthus. D Darren, if you're out there, I'm so sorry. Please write in and tell us how to say your name correctly. This comes from Darren Bonthus at GameSpot. He says, uh, Sony has confirmed a list of games that will be available as part of its overhauled PS Plus subscription service, which includes a selection of PS4 and PS5 titles for the PS Plus Extra and Premium tiers. Several games from PlayStation Studios, Marvel, Spider-Man, Returnal, and Demon's Souls will be made available in the new game catalog alongside third-party titles such as Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Control, Ultimate Edition, and Mortal Kombat 11. Classic games from the original PlayStation and PlayStation Portable will also be made available through a smaller library, which also includes a mix of first-party and third-party games. Ape Escape, Siphon Filter, and Wild Arms 3 are just some of the games joining the list alongside Tekken 2 and several more. Sony says that the classic games will come with a new user interface, menus, and quality of life features that allow a user to rewind gameplay and save their progress at any point. Awesome. That is incredible. Players who have previously purchased the digital versions of these classic games won't have to buy them again or sign up for PS Plus to access them on PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5. Quote, when these titles are released for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, players can head to PlayStation Store and download a version for the consoles at no extra cost if they already own the digital version of the title. Uh, Sony said in a blog post, another quote here, some of the titles will also be available for individual purchase, end quote. Sony also included a partial list of PlayStation 3 games will be available through streaming and upcoming game trials. PS Plus Extra, which is essentially the same as the current PlayStation Plus, will still continue to offer two free games as part of the subscription service every month. But the PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium users will be able to access additional games in the middle of the month, according to Sony. The number of games refreshed will vary per month. There's some really cool stuff in this. Oh, fuck yeah, there is. Yeah. And and so there's if you're interested in knowing like all the games that are coming out, the the list is massive for each of these. I didn't want to pull in like all the games because we would have been naming games for 10 minutes. Um, but and they they say that this is like supposedly just a portion of the games coming out. But like the thing launches in like five weeks. So like I feel like this is probably most of what we're going to see. But I, there'll probably also be some extras. But this this really cool thing in the middle. Uh, quality of life features that allow a user to rewind gameplay and save their progress at any point uh, on the classic games. Really cool. A whole new user interface. Really cool uh, there. And then also, like, if if you have bought these on previous consoles, then you can, like, re-download them, essentially, which is something that they didn't support n at, until now for these, for specifically for the old games, for, like, the PS1, PSP, uh, PS2, like, that kind of thing. Uh, but, yeah, Kevin, what are, what, are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, this is actually kind of incredible. I, I know a lot of people were shitting on 
the new PlayStation Plus tiers, they were like, oh, it's too expensive, or eh, you you haven't mentioned anything about how your first title parties out well, you've mentioned that you will not be releasing your first right. title parties for free through the service, but we can do this on the Xbox Game Pass and blah blah blah. There's a lot of stuff here, and I think what makes this incredibly cool is that you're getting an access to a lot a games library that is huge yeah. like fucking massive and you know i'm not gonna shit on game pass i think game pass is fantastic for the price it is and for a lot of the first party games you're getting and also just exclusive releases you're getting so you are getting your bang for your buck the library for this is just so much bigger though and sure you might not be getting you know, day one access. And, you know, there's always a chance that you will get day one access to certain games as each month rolls out. I mean, with PlayStation Plus, a lot of times you do get like day one games for some smaller studios. That's great. This is really cool. Yeah. The rewind sure. feature, the rewind feature, mm -hmm. insane to me. That's really cool. Like, I, I'm, I'm interested is... to see how that works. Yeah. It could be terrible. Yeah. But the idea of it, see it just seems really cool yeah. like to be able to to kind of stop and be like no i want to do something else the mind in the trophy hunter in me is like okay some of the playstation 3 games are you still supporting trophies on those mm. because i kind of want to you know get in there and get in the you know the trophies and i love the trophies Sheer. so like there's that kind of stuff that then that's very i think just for me and a small subsect of people but no i think this is fantastic i think yeah. this might not rival Game Pass for a lot of people because you're not going to be getting God of War Day 1. Sure. And I can totally understand, and I, I am there with you on this kind of stuff. But in the grand scheme of things, I think this is a very good starting point for this service. And I agree. With time, I think that it will start to flesh out more in terms of like what they're going to start offering at the higher tiers mm -hmm. in terms of like, are you going to get a discount for, you know, you know, first party launches? Are you going to get like a 10% or whatnot? I think that would be really cool. But in terms of where we are right now, I think this is the like a really nice offering. I do too. I, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. There's also like in that list, like when they break it apart tier by tier, like what you're going to be getting, there are a lot of games that like when things like Red Dead Redemption 2, is I see it on the second or the third tier. I forget which one, but it's like, that's a game that's like never on sale for more than like half off. So like, that's a $30 game that like, I don't own. I, I borrowed it when I played it, but like, I would love to, to jump back into that at some point. There's a lot of, and especially like if, if there's any listeners that if you're new to PlayStation or you just haven't bought like a bunch of PlayStation games, there are so there's going to be so many games on here like that. You might've missed that are like, uh, and, and and also, so there's a couple exciting things, and there's like two things that I'm disappointed by. But the a okay. couple other things I'm excited about uh, by, they're bringing in like Ghost of Tsushima director's cut. They're bringing Death Stranding director's cut. So they're finally they're bringing in PS5 games, mm -hmm. uh, it, which they hadn't done really previously, uh, with like PlayStation Now. So they're you know it's not the brand new ones, but it's high profile ones. So that's exciting. And um, this thing at the very end, uh, the PlayStation Extra and Premium, which is the top two. Uh, tiers they're going to still have access to those two free games that the base tier gets but then they're going to have access to additional games in the middle of the month so they're going to be adding like new so maybe it'll be three four or five i don't know how many it's going to be but maybe it'll be when it's all said and done like three or four a month for those tiers and those are usually like newer games uh so that's that's exciting the two things that i'm a little disappointed by are with the ps2 bit Looking at the list, it's only they're only bringing over the PS2 games that they've already remastered. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem, at, at a glance at least, unless they announce something new, it doesn't seem like we're going to be getting any PS2 games that we've not already gotten. So it's like it's games like Dark Cloud. It's games like uh, uh, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head right now. Uh, but so like things like Burnout Two, or like these other like high profile PS2 games that I would love to revisit. Seems like at a glance, probably not going to be on this, but hopefully that's something that they support down the line. So that's a little disappointing. The other thing that's disappointing is the PS3 offerings. There's a lot of like surprisingly big 
first party and or exclusives that were missing things like metal gear solid four like there's really no way to play that game right now unless you go find a ps3 so here's my thing this is their initial launch correct yeah for sure i honestly like i could see the reason why they're not they're not showing all their cards or maybe they are Maybe they Hopefully are. that's the I reason. I don't know. If they I, are showing all their cards, then they're they fucked up. Yeah, I, and like it's not a huge thing. Like honestly, how many of us are going to go revisit a bunch of PS3 games? Like, if they had Dante's Inferno, I would sure. fucking that'd be the first game I played. Sure, but like, but then part of me wonders because like an, another really notable one, uh, Resistance. Like none of the Resistance games are on the PS3 list, which is like that's a straight up first party. Like Metal Gear Solid Four was just an exclusive. It wasn't a first party game, but Resistance. It's surprising that it's it's a high profile first party game that's not on the list. So then my question is is there other news around those big high profile games that like are they remaking them? Are they like are they going to be ported? Like what what is what are they doing with those that makes them not on this list? So there's a potential excitement, but as of today right now looking at this list, a little disappointment. 100% believe right now the reason we don't see resistance is because there is a resistance game that will be coming out, not by Insomniac. It'll be sure. someone else, but they'll still use the IP and then they'll just be like, Hey, we're putting all three in like a remastered format. It'll come. Could be, or, you know, they're, they want to get people excited for three, six months down the line and be like, Hey, we've got all three resistances coming and you guys should jump on and play them. Cause they're also fantastic, which makes sense. Could be. But that's also implying that, you know, they aren't showing their full hand, which if right. I'm a company, regardless of who I am, like, I'm not going to show all the cards in my hand. Sure. Because also, like, the unless I'm Microsoft, they... which right now, if I'm Microsoft, <laughs> show all of your fucking cards because yeah, it's... please give me your cards, please. Uh, which I mean, that that is a good point, because like when you look at the, the blog post on the PlayStation blog, like the list is long. So like. Who's going line by line and reading every single game? But if they stagger their announcements, then there can be more excitement that builds, that kind of thing. So I could definitely see that potentially being the case. Cayman, the news doesn't stop there. It do- no, it doesn't. When it comes to both PlayStation Plus and just the PlayStation platform in general, we have news directly from Ubisoft that Ubisoft Plus is coming to PlayStation. And there's two facets to this story. So I'm pulling this from Matt Personal at IGN. Story goes like this. Ubisoft has announced that its Game Pass-like service, Ubisoft Plus, is coming to PlayStation. Furthermore, a version of it will be available as part of the new PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium subscription tiers. Ubisoft Plus will first be available on PlayStation in the form of Ubisoft Plus Classics, which comes bundled with PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium tiers. This version of Ubisoft Plus features a, quote, curated selection of popular games, end quote. 27 will be available at launch that include Assassin's Creed Valhalla, The Division, and For Honor, which is three of their... For Honor kind of died, but Valhalla and Division, two of their their high... Uh, like, their biggest uh, franchises. I don't know why none of the words came to me then. To continue, Ubisoft Plus Classics will be available from when the new version of PlayStation Plus launches which is June 13th in America. While Ubisoft has now officially announced the service, it was semi-revealed when uh, Sony recently announced that uh, Valhalla, oh right, what, what we just covered in the last story. Other games coming in the first 27 include Child of Light, Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon, Far Cry 4, Steep, South Park, The Fractured But Whole, The Crew 2, Trials Rising, Watch Dogs, and Werewolves Within. Ubisoft promises the classic collections will grow to more than 50 games by the end of 2022, and there are, quote, more games planned in the future, end quote. Furthermore, Ubisoft announced that the full version of Ubisoft Plus, which includes more than 100 games, day one releases, and premium editions of some games, is coming to PlayStation and Xbox consoles. No date was offered for either console, aside from the promise that the service, quote, ultimately will be available on PlayStation and Xbox, End quote. Currently, Ubisoft Plus is only available on PC, Stadia, and Amazon's Luna service. So this is a, uh, uh, a service that I've never really paid much attention to because it was a PC exclusive and I don't have a PC. But it sounds fucking cool. Like, Yeah, no, it's great. Because I'm going to be either that. doing extra or premium. I don't know which one yet. Probably premium because I'm... Uh, I have, extra uh, I or have premium. Mental, I have mental issues and I just... Uh, 
I get swindled by these services. Can I'm you? I'm paying for a wedding, so you I are. don't. My fiance will be like, "No, you're going to get the base tier because you you have to pay for a wedding." Correct. So. Uh, but this is really cool. Like, I didn't really know much about Ubisoft Plus, but I'm I'm really interested to see what does the premium service cost because mm. if like with day one releases, I play most Ubisoft games, not all Ubisoft games, but most of them. So like. If it's a competitive price, I'm interested in doing that so that I don't have to spend 60 bucks or 70 bucks every time. Just depends sure. on what the price is. But the classics thing coming as part of PlayStation Plus, really cool. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I mean, I don't I mean, I feel like there's a new story here, but at the same time it's also like, meh. I I like there I don't know, there's stuff here. Look, it, it's going to be part of PlayStation. That's fantastic. If you got a PlayStation, it sucks. If you got an Xbox or an, a Switch, which if you got a Switch, you're not getting anything anyway because, <laughs> let's be honest, you have a Switch. Right. Um, you're going to be playing Mario the rest of your life. Um, <laughs> but, no, I mean, look, I think this is really cool. Um, it's With it being built in, with, with the classics being built in, I think that's fantastic for the service that you're going to get. That adds even more reason for you if you are on the fence more reason for you to jump on to the PlayStation version of game pass, yeah. which I'm just going to start calling PlayStation game pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause basically that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is cool for that. Um, for me, I probably won't get the, the premium version of Ubisoft plus just because a lot of these games that they have coming out, if, unless it's division three, which, which we'll him. never get anymore because they're fucking stuck on average. Fuck you, James Cameron, you piece of shit. I just, we won't get it for a long time. So I don't mind paying, shelling out the $70 to get the next Assassin's Creed if it looks interesting to me. And that's the thing with like Assassin's Creed games where more often than not, I get them when they're like $39.99 because mm, sure. as cool as it looks, more often than not, I'm just not jumping into them. Like I origins is one of my favorite games ever made. I think it's an absolutely incredible game, but Odyssey and Valhalla also great games, but they're so long and so big. And and I have a lot of issues with Ubisoft's formula currently. Sure. It's not, it's not something for me as of right now, but I think for playing the older games, it's a really cool opportunity to jump into some of those. And, you know, I don't see any issue with, with what they're doing. I think that's, good on playstation for picking that up yeah sucks for xbox users so it just blows i, I mean, there's no other really way to say it yeah well they're gonna have access to the the plus tier uh or like the whatever the the, the yeah version is yeah. it just depends That's... on what that price is that they, they'd have to you know honestly i wouldn't be surprised if several months from now this is also part of game pass yeah i wouldn't either i yeah. mean like we've mentioned previously uh, microsoft apparently just has infinite money so Good for our, you. our check is still in the mail apparently yeah xbox. thanks xbox yeah um well if you don't mind patrick i, I certainly some, don't i have some news dead space remake officially has a release date and i can promise you it's not going to be coming on january 27th of 2023 because that's fucking bullshit uh, i i really hope desperately that it's not that you're wrong I hope I am too, but I don't expect you to be wrong. It's I would say March. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Have you watched? Did you watch any of? Have you been watching any of their gameplay? uh, Like in the the development, like diaries, essentially that they've been releasing. Yeah, yeah. The one that they did last week when they announced the date on it, um, I watched a a fair amount of that because Dead Space is like one of my favorite games of all time. Mm And the bits that they've been showing, like it looks really far along. The question, I guess, then becomes how much of the game looks like that? Are they showing us a slice? Are they showing uh, like that's, I think, probably where the the big question mark is. But like if a lot of the game looks like this, I could see it coming in January. But then again, how many big games have not been delayed in the last honestly, like five years? Yeah, most of them get that, delayed. Just wait for that God of War Ragnarok delay. This comes from Michael McWurter at uh, Polygon, which is the last name. I don't know if we ever address this. Sounds like how people from New Jersey say water, which is McWurter. Warder. Warder. 
Michael McWhorter. Um, this comes from Michael McWhorter at Polygon. He says, <laughs> Electronic Arts remake of sci-fi survival horror game Dead Space is coming to PlayStation 5, Windows PC, and Xbox Series X on January 27th, 2023. The game's developers announced Thursday during a live stream presentation. Dead Space was previously pegged for an early 2023 release, according to EA. EA Motive, the studio behind the Dead Space remake, also said to expect a quote-unquote more substantial look at the game this October ahead of Halloween. So don't count on seeing much more from Dead Space at or around Summer Game Fest in June, especially when, especially since Electronic Arts won't hold an EA Play Live event as it has in years past. Which, once again, look, I'm sorry... It, just with all of the delays happening and everything, like the game and what they've shown us looks really good. And it definitely looks like they're along to a certain point. And the game's not huge, right? Like this isn't some massive, this isn't a Starfield size game. Right. I just, but I just still don't think that we're going to get that. Like I could see this being pushed back a few weeks, a few months even. I just, I'm sorry, it, and I really hope I'm wrong because I, I cannot wait to get my hands on this game. I absolutely cannot wait. I love Dead Space so much. It is such a great fucking oh, game, sorry. but I don't know, man. I just, I don't think it's going to happen, and I don't want to get my hopes up. And so I'm going to try to temper expectations for our audience as well. Don't get your hopes up either. Because it might not come. But you know what you can get your hopes up for? And I'm going to cut into Patrick. My name is Mayo3. Oh. <laughs> Comes out waiting. today, baby. I was My waiting name is to Mayo bring that up. Three. But, hey, I'm all for it. I... We're fucking skipping to it. I, I just had this feeling. You weren't going to talk about it. You were going to stifle. Look, I needed. I was going to talk about it because I needed you to be fucking positive about something on this episode. Well, and I know this, you'd be positive about my name is Mayo Three. So, well, I'm gonna get I, a real big bummer on the next topic, but no, my name is Mayo Three. <laughs> the end of the series, according to Sean from tell Green us, Lava Studio. Tell us a little bit about uh, your name being Mayo. You okay. just you just tap a Mayo jar. Yeah, this is for those of you out there. This is the kind of game that gets came in happy is a game where you tap a Mayo jar. Why this he's game on I, this show, I don't fucking know. It, look, my name is Mayo. It's a dollar and ninety nine cents. You can get. Actually, I think you can get the other games for like ninety nine, just ninety nine cents. They're really short. It's a very easy platinum, but they are so fucking funny. Like this one I, looks I, pretty, like a, much more like a game than the others did. I feel like I, I could just like promise you right now, it's worth the ninety nine cents in the hour it takes to platinum it. To do it. I don't give a shit if you're not someone who wants the platinum games. These games are one of the funniest experiences you'll ever have in your life. And they like pretty much stealth launched it to today. Um, It's here. It's live. I've already got it downloaded. That's what I'm going to be playing. I'll I'll tell you all about how much I love it on the next episode. The games are just stupid fun. They're not stupid fun. There's a lot of repetitive tapping on Mayo jars. You just got to trust me on this, guys. It reminds I- me of an episode of Rocco's Modern Life. Yes. Remember this show, Cayman? Oh, of course. Well, yes. I mean, I, hey, just making sure. Uh, where Rocco, uh, they're, I, I don't remember like all the details of the episode, but essentially they're trying to like make this uh, television channel uh, like nosedive and lose ratings. And they're like, this is how we'll do it. We'll just... For 30 minutes, we'll just put a jar of mayo on the television. And then it totally backfires. And it's like the most highly rated show that they've ever put out. And uh, everyone just wanted to watch a jar of mayo on TV for 30 minutes. And I feel like that's what this game is. That it, it, yeah. concept yeah. as a video game. It's it. There, it's more interactive. It's the you just got to trust me that it's the humor there. It's very similar in the sense of like it's it, it can be very sad. Um, which sounds insane, mm, but it's very it's very similar to like uh, the, uh, the Stanley Parable, okay. where uh, it's very meta, and they really lean into like being incredibly meta and being like, "Hey, people will just pay money to get 
a platinum trophy. Hey. And some people will. I'm not the guy who just pays for cheap platinums. Like, I actually want a game that I can play. But the thing is, and that's what I love about My Name is Mayo, is that it's a game that is incredibly meta, but it's also just really fucking funny. And there's also a lot of, like, questions about why you're doing what you're doing and just feeling really bad about yourself, which if you like that, which I do personally, um, you you won't go wrong with My Name is Mayo. I, all th- uh, at least the first two. I'm assuming the third will be the exact same. Um, so right. I'm on the PlayStation app. I'm down okay. buying them. He's on the PlayStation app. He's downloading. He's buying it. Um, when I text for my name is Mayo one. Okay, good. I text Sydney, me. my fiance, and I said, "Hey, guess what? My name is Mayo three came out today." And she responded with, in all caps, oh my God, yes. So <laughs> that doesn't tell you that, that it, there's so much there packaged in $1.99. I just don't know what else to say. If I haven't sold you on My Name is Mayo, maybe I can sell you on this next story. Silent Hill 2 could be potentially coming out again. I, there are rumors, Cayman. This there comes rumors. from this comes from Andy Robinson at VGC. He says, "Last week, a collection of leaked concept images appeared to confirm that a new Silent Hill game is or was in development. Now, details are emerging on what some of those projects could look like." As first mentioned by influencer Nate the Hate and journalist Jeff Grubb, or as we like to call him, Mr. Grubby Grubb. Ooh. One of the in-development titles could be a remake of a fan-favorite 2001 installment in Silent Hill 2. It's claimed that the remake will feature reworked AI, animations, puzzles, and several new endings, and potentially release as a timed exclusive on PlayStation consoles. But as VGC and insiders have reported previously, we understand Konami has been actively talking to several developers about reviving the Silent Hill IP across multiple games. One of those projects is intended to be a smaller episodic series of short stories, we were told. Sources have previously indicated that until Dawn Studio Supermassive had once been involved in talks for such a project, which eventually evolved into its Dark Pictures games. One new, one new name two people independently gave VGC was Annapurna Interactive, the acclaimed publisher behind games such as Sayonara Wild at Hearts, Outer Wilds and Telling Lies, which they said could be involved in the story's project. However, they said many studios had been involved in pitches for Silent Hill, and it's possible Anna Perner was simply involved in one of those discussions rather than a project that was eventually greenlit. Finally, VGC has been told that Konami is planning to release a new mainline entry in the Silent Hill series. It's not clear who is leading the game, but, but VGC reported last year that a Japanese studio is working on a Silent Hill project. The images leaked last week are understood to be related to a PT-style teaser game codenamed Sakura, which is intended to be released as a free digital title to build anticipation for the larger projects. So, not only are we getting one supposed Silent Hill game came in, not only are we getting two supposed Silent Hill games came in, Yes, but apparently we're getting three. Apparently, I feel like that is kind of like too much, maybe question mark. I, uh, I mean, it's because like there's no way all three of them are good. Statistics tell me that at least one of them is going to be a stinker. Statistics tell me it's Konami, so they're probably all bad. But then it's like and like so the the biggest rumor at the moment is that Bloober team, a, a studio is behind one of them. And I don't know Bloober team personally. But the internet seems very upset by that. No, Bloober team's not doing shit. So if they aren't, I, it seems like most of the internet is happy about that because people don't seem to really like the games that they've made. Well, I mean, it, like if, if you want to know more about Bloober team, just Google it. I can tell you right now they're not working on shit. And I can tell you right now that that entire studio is a joke. It's they a front. For, it's a cartel. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, they just yeah, pretty much. Are they located uh, they just, in Albuquerque? Possibly. No, they, they, look, just Google it if you want to look more into that. I would just go ahead and take the name out of your mouth because it's not 
that's not them. Okay. Um, the well, Anna. What am I putting in my mouth instead? A thirteen-inch man named Dollman. <laughs> Um, no, I, like I think in terms of the rumors and everything, Annapurna sounds interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. W- the question is, is would Annapurna join into a venture with Konami? And that is what gets me a little backed up. And I'm yep. like, nah, don't don't know if that's true. <sighs> like Konami's track record recently has been shit. Correct. And that's worrisome. But I think starting at two is not a terrible idea um, because, I mean, that's that's really where a majority of the lore for Silent Hill starts to take off. Two and three is really where it's at. Um, why they don't start at one and just kind of like, hey, let's just get back into it. Silent Hill two. If, if I had to if I had to guess, like two makes a lot of sense. I would be more shocked if if. If the reason the okay, the whole reason I would say that they would start with two is because they have a plan to remake three as well. Okay. That would be my assumption. And the reason I say that is because if it is also true that we're gonna be getting a brand new Silent Hill entry, that they're not done with the series. Mm. If they were done with the series, I would have started with one and just did one, two, three. And when was the last time we got one? Like it's been like a decade, right? At least I want to say the last one might have been Downpour, and that would have come out on the PlayStation Three. There was Shattered Memories that was on the Wii, which I really loved. I really like Shattered. Two thousand twelve. It has been ten years. I mean, well, technically, PT I guess technically counts, and that was two thousand. Nah, but that's not like a full fledged game. It's not a full fledged game. It was a playable yeah. teaser in twenty fourteen for a game that was supposed to be. Uh, kojima silent hill game that died um so was it downpour though book of memories book of memories yeah Yeah. down well actually downpour also came out in 2012 as did a silent hill hd collection so we got three games in 2012 and we've not heard from silent hill since i've never played silent hill uh so this story uh, like I, it gets spooky. me excited in a way because i've never played them and I, i'd like to especially if it's a remake like i'd love to play a remake of a game that people seem to really like a lot uh but you know i i here's my thing is what you think? the the hd collection pissed off a lot of people because it was bad it was just really bad um it functioned horribly mm. and konami that same year and the kind of the way the story goes is that essentially they put not enough money into having three games released and they were all really bad and people Nike. tend to go back. Yeah. They tend to go back and they, they, they will just play the original versions of one, two and three. Cause that's just the best way to play them. <laughs> um, my worry is with just Konami's track record lately, like they're not Capcom, like even the wor- like one of the worst, a lot of well, what people will say, the worst mainline Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 6, still not a bad game. Mm. It's just not, it's not a bad game. Mm. It's just not the same level of good that I would say the rest of the games are. If you were to have played the last few um silent hill games they are very very bad they are sure i mean they might games. they it, it compared to silent hill which again i've not played them so i can't compare them apples to apples uh it could still be a lot better than silent hill and still not be good i would say arguably and this could piss a lot of people off by saying this i would say silent hill one two three are better than Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3. Wow. They're just... I mean, I'll just be completely honest. I think they're better games from gameplay to spookiness to just everything involved storyline-wise. They're just better games. Sure. I, I don't know and, that I believe you because you think Resident Evil 6 is a good game, but... No, I, I, don't, I, I didn't say it was a good game. I said that it wasn't near okay maybe i said it was a good game it's not as bad as it look it's not as bad as people want to say it is especially if you're going to do what you're doing here which is comparing it to the last set of silent games which were 
really fucking bad. Sure. Like, I don't know if I can explain this enough. These games are really, really bad. Just really bad games. Resident Evil 6 just wasn't a very good Resident Evil game. Sure. And, and that happens, right? Sure, yeah, like, no, 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 just... for sure, for sure. It definitely, they they went a step too far into the action. But exactly. I also just think that game just fucking sucks. I mean, and you're, you're fair to assume that. But if you ask anyone who played the HD collection or down downpour or book of memories they'll tell you those games are just just really bad games okay and i don't know like i i'm hoping that konami because you know they've gotten into the whole like more entertainment they run like spas now and shit they're all about slots and i want to say like maybe the last konami game that was released was metal gear survive and i mean i wouldn't be shocked if konami announced that they're gonna have a fucking battle royale like they're just behind the times i my hope is that the game will be as good as resident evil 2 and if it's not as good as resident evil 2 then our, our our one of our fans jade maybe it'll be as good as resident evil 3 (laughs) <laughs> which is jade if you're listening if you still haven't played it the game is out and has been for like the last four years what if i told you that konami released a game this year 2022 you're fucking kidding me and a, and it's a a, a, a liked game it, it got uh, someone on this show talked about it and that is Oh, master duel oh you know what we we're done with the oven okay <laughs> I want to fucking talk saying, about it. But I'm before done. that, I mean, the the other game that they, the most recent other game is eFootball, which is like the yeah, free to play, the uh, worst evolution soccer, which is like universally agreed upon that it is like a really bad, really, really bad game. Um, like unplayable in several ways. Um, came in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you need a hug. Come, come on I, over. Come to my house. Let me give you a look. Hug. After recording Doll Man and having to put up with your shit during that, and then having now to hear the gonna... truth. Sometimes, Cayman, the truth is a painful thing. Uh, why don't we end our show, Cayman? Let's end our fucking show, Patrick. With some, uh, it's just some quick hits. These are new things to add to your calendars. This will take 30 second stops. Please uh, kill me. <laughs> Not an official release date, but Alan Wake is coming to Switch later this year from Remedy. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, t- take a swig. Uh, Dying Light 2's first story expansion has been delayed from this summer to September. Is that a Bojangle? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it oh, is. What, what are they Bojangles. called? Bojangles. It's a koozie. I call it but they're Bojangles. It's bow time, baby. Bo- uh, bow angles. And finally, this is an exciting one. If you're still listening to us and you play and you have a Nintendo Switch, if you haven't rage quit this episode because Cayman's just a salty little boy. <laughs> I've been very angry this episode. <laughs> you have. Free, uh, Fall Guys is going free to play and it's going to be launching on Xbox and Switch in Fuck June. Yeah. On June 21st. Awesome. Fall Guys fucking fun game like i Super will fun. be I, i'm gonna jump back into the this is on switch i will absolutely be playing this uh on switch it's a battle royale really really fun game it's gonna have cross play cross progression so all my skins that i unlocked on the ps4 i'm gonna get to bring over to the switch which is exciting uh but fall guys very 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 fun game uh that you should all check out once that comes out on june 21st i'm sure we'll be talking about that uh in a few weeks on the shoe Cayman, that's the end of our show. I'm just sorry. Hey, it's okay. Point. Look, you had... Uh, I feel like this episode was therapy for you. <laughs> and I th- I think we maybe made a breakthrough. Uh, emphasis on break. I think we might... I think we broke you. We broke... <laughs> yes, so. you broke me. Uh, but they can follow you on Twitter at Kid Cayman. They can follow me on Twitter at Patrick Schwag. You follow the pod on Twitter at Spot Games Pod, on Instagram at Spotlight Games Podcast. And hey, if you're on TikTok, we got one TikTok up. Maybe I'll post another one this week. Who knows? That's kind of the fun about TikTok is, oh, when am I going to post some things? That's Spotlight Never. Games Pod. <laughs> uh, rate us, review us, follow us on YouTube, click the bell, ring it, uh, whatever, all the things you're supposed to do on, on uh, YouTube. 
uh, be on the show, mail at uh, or show up at my house next time we record. When that's going to be, I won't tell you. That, that's your game. You got to find out A, where I live, and B, when we're recording. Came and thank you for being on the show. I'm sorry I hurt you. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was such a sad sack of shit this whole episode. <laughs> hey, God it happens. Damn. It ha- I think, I think uh, our listeners. Oh, yeah, angles. Oh, it, it, I mean, it is bow time. That's, that's for sure. Uh, I will see you uh, tomorrow to record our next crossover episode, which is going to be all about the movie Uncharted. Holy shit, yeah. So check that it's, out. It's fucking bad, guys. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I love it. I just, I really hope I love it so I can just make it. Maybe so that's mad. why I'm so angry. Is it could be. I watched could Uncharted be. last night. Trauma. It made it me is... question everything <laughs> about my love of the actual games. You, that's how much I hated it. You are having a thieves end right now. Uh, <sighs> a little Uncharted humor for you. All right, guys. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Let us know what you thought. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.